Good evening. Well, welcome to our uh, November Say It With Music, and we're delighted this evening to have a good friend of ours, uh, Ross Kimura, here this evening. Uh, Ross uh, brings a, a love of music, a love of the Lord, and tonight he'll be bringing us uh, some wonderful music. He'll be bringing us a, a, a time of devotions. And I have before me a very impressive bio. He said, you don't have to read all of that. I'm thanking him for that because some of the names were rather hard to pronounce, truth be told. But Ross Kimura started his formal training at a very early age in piano, voice, and Broadway. He was very fortunate to have studied under some great artists and teachers, which I will not read them all, but trust me, it's a jolly impressive looking group of folk. His early childhood experiences of learning and observing rehearsals, workshops, and Broadway productions with Richard Rogers, Oscar Hammerstein, Lower and, uh, Lerner and Lower, and Jules Stein is at the heart of his love for musical theater. He has received his bachelor's degree in piano voice and biblical studies, and he received his master's degree in piano performance with equivalent minors in voice, music theory, and orchestration. He has performed at numerous concert, concerts in the US, Europe, and Asia as a pianist, vocalist, and choral conductor. Ross is starting his eighth year as one of the assistant music directors, vocal faculty, and rehearsal accompanist for both Broadway Theater Project 1 and 2 at the University of South Florida in Tampa. So tonight, I ask you to join me in welcoming Ross Kimura. Thank you very much. I see a lot of familiar faces, and uh, because of the lights, I don't see your faces, so you all look young, okay? <laughs> let's, let's start it off that way, all right? <laughs> Thanks to the St. Paul people for coming uh, that I knew from before. And um, tonight I want to do what's called a hodgepodge, not a hodge porridge, but a hodgepodge of, of things that, songs that we don't seem to do anymore and songs that are very dear to your heart. God bless America. You can clap. 
Since it's been Veterans Weekend, many of you have served. I don't know if I'm going to catch all the armies, you know what I'm saying? All the, the, the theme songs. But one song I have not done with you all, I, I, I don't know what the Salvation Army hymn is, I guess. There are a couple, I guess, if you do. But I'm going to play along. This reminds me of the Psalter, you know, where you have the words in one book and then you have the melody in another. So you could be singing it in Chinese, Russian, whatever, and, and I won't know, you know, so. And the truth is I don't know, but I want to hear you sing. Will you do that for me? 
Uh, we're doing it to the tune, Jesus, my Jesus, I love thee. Correct? Okay, all right, here we go. Again, one, two, three. And now, hallelujah. I just love a cappella singing, you know. I teach in a Catholic school. God only knows why I got there. I've done every denomination. And then when I went to this church that I'm at, I, I serve at a Lutheran church. They started calling Hope Lutheran the Vietnamese church. Now go figure that out, you know. Because there's a Buddhist church, Vietnamese church, across the street. So I had congregation members that were saying, why don't you tell them that we're not a Vietnamese church? And I said, go figure, get out of my face. You go tell them, you know, <laughs> duh, right? Because I eat pho, if you call it that way, you know, and pho. And, I, and, and, and it is so interesting. But times have changed. If you know, you of all people would know that it has changed. I do not want in my heart of hearts to lose the patriotic feel that we have. It seems to be in recesses of not only the services, the armed services, but in churches. And we're starting to get too quiet. That's just my opinion. Not that you have to go out and tell them, you know, you gotta sing this and all of that. But it has changed so much. And um, 
I feel that when we remove the security of protection from our lives, whether it is the military or the family, we run into big trouble. And I've been blessed, like I said, you know, all my years. And how many of you have been here before when I've come here? Bless your heart. There's one person that's not here tonight. Her name is Shirley Hamrick. And uh, I ask that you pray for Shirley. Uh, she's going through a really difficult bout of cancer right now. But she has been the person that has actually saved me when I first came here to Florida. And I've got some Florida friends over there. Thank you for coming here tonight. And I wanted to dedicate this song to her because she asked me to do it if I had a chance. Now, don't envision an Asian trying to sing Camelot, okay? <laughs> this is when I want you to go into prayer. You know what I mean? <laughs> Close your eyes because, you know, because it's just like if I were in Japan, if ever I would leave you, you know, I, I, talking like that, you know? So, but, um, uh, but no, I told her I'd try to do this. I haven't done it since I, I've seen it put up, actually, in New York. It's got to be about 40 years ago. So um, this is a beautiful song, and I want to dedicate it to not only her, but to all of you. It's about, it's, it's about never, ever leaving anybody for any reason. And that's how I look at it, On, as far as marriage. We all have differences. Things happen. But the idea is that God will never leave us or forsake us.
we're going to approach the uh, salute to the armed service. You may stand if you have served. And I consider this an armed service of the Salvation Army for Jesus, the most powerful leader of all. No weapons can come against him. Some of you have stood alone for a long time. And when your work seems to be done on earth, you feel like that is over. But it's not over, okay, until this fat man sings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. So here we go. forgotten 
and God has not forgotten, you know, you and all of that. So God, may this offering we provide tonight be another symbol of our worship of our true God. We thank you for this evening, and we ask your blessing on the offering, on us, and on Mr. Ross. These things in your precious name, amen.
You know, I've, over the years, I've learned one thing about music, and I, I cannot believe I just made 61 years old. And uh, some of you may think that that is young, but um, it is in my heart, and I hope to keep my mind young. And, um, you know, I'm gonna keep playing the piano, even if they have to roll me in and roll me out, you know what I mean? So, uh, someone says, where's my wheelchair? Well, it has no brakes. You know what it's like? But it's great in a high school, because, you know, they get out of my way. You know? <laughs> Go to class, and I chase them, you know? And, um, you know, a teacher on wheels is pretty dangerous. Okay, uh, I'm not talking a car, but you know, in, in a wheelchair. But it's very interesting in my experience that um, now that I thought, oh, well, you know, I won't be doing this anymore, but I love working with Broadway. So we just put the new uh, Godspell, the, 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 the redo, I call it, of Godspell, which took a full rock band, you know. So basically what I teach there is I teach guitar, I'm teaching ukulele, uh, piano, um, and uh, get in guys stirring on drums, and we're transforming that into more of an upbeat praise, okay? Well, let me make this comment. What is upbeat? This is upbeat, right? It really is. And the way you keep your rhythm, you know, I, and I'm not putting down young people at all, because, you know, I mean, I have to do that, you know. I have to do, uh, so do you know, um, uh, let's see, our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love, our God is an awesome God, sing it, and our God is an awesome God, he reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power. Awesome God. Here we go. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom and power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. From heaven above with winds and power, love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. When I traveled and did that in Japan, they thought I was some kind of Martian. <laughs> you look like us and you play like this? <laughs> you know? And I would go back to New York. Some of you kids, you don't know, I, you know, I grew up in a Jewish family, so now I'd go back and I went, oh gosh, Japan is destroying you. <laughs> I said, what do you mean Japan is destroying me? Look at this, look at this, you know? Now you see it comes out, right? And then I go back to Hawaii, where, to where my mother lived after I, I stayed in New York till about 14, 15 years of age. And there was one huge catastrophic burden, an explosion in my life. There were no bagels. <laughs> and second, I didn't know how to use chopsticks. Can you believe that? And so one day they said, oh, we're bringing bagels to Hawaii. And I call them hockey pucks because they were lenders bagels, you know? <laughs> then my mother would get upset because I wouldn't eat sushi. How many of you eat sushi? Yeah, you like it? Okay, you either like it or you hate it, you know, that kind of a thing. And so I'd sit at the table and she said, you go and eat this because this is better than what you have. And I said, what is this, sushi? She said, yeah, I don't like sushi. 
your grandfather's ashes is blowing out of the grave right now. You're going to tell your grandfather you don't need a sushi? And my mother, you know, she and I were alike, but she had a loss for words, you know, especially for American words. So she didn't know what to call me because I had such a mouth on me, you know. She said, you know, you come back from New York and you sound like New York. And I said, yeah, go figure, you know. I mean, I'm from New York, hey, ma, you know. And she said, you know, but then when you come here, you are a salad. <laughs> I cannot take it, you know. She said, I can't take it. I don't know what to call you. So she called me a horse face because she had no vocabulary, okay? You horse face. So, as you can see, they had problems transitioning me to the Asian lifestyle. And I went back to New York, and they're very vocal, like I am right now. As you know, those of you from up north or in the city, you know, how you doing? What about it? You know, and, and, and um, I went back to New York, and my Aunt Sophie said she had her own special chair. She was the first neighborhood watch in Brooklyn. <laughs> she was as wide as the windowsill. She had two pillows with the windowsill up and her chin. She is declared as the first neighborhood watch. She would go, I'm not putting down any, any, any backgrounds, but she said, you know, I told you those Irish curtains were dirty. I tell you they were dirty. And my father came in and I said, look, look at your aunt right there sitting at the wi window. And she said, you know, she was born with a head first and the rest of her body came out because she has no neck, okay? <laughs> And then she would come around with the nasal accent, so, Bernie, you think you got it made, do you? I will never forget what you did to me on October 1952 at 3 a.m. Ladies, you catch where I'm going here? You snuck tuna in the gefilte fish. And the rabbi never forgiven me. He blamed me. So he says, what, is that going to help your short neck? He says, Not, nothing bad as a short neck and a big mouth, you know? And, uh, but, you know, people, they joke like that. They do love each other. Today, joking is very serious. Joking has turned into put-downs of people, and I'm the kind of person that they don't anticipate in a Catholic school, okay? <laughs> So I did the sign of the cross backwards, and they probably thought I was a Satanist or something. You know, I mean, I don't know. There's the Greek way and there's the regular way, but I enjoy teaching there because it is an excellent school. It is, uh, it's got rules and everything, and praise Jesus, they have uniforms. And you may say, why? You want to try to fight with those over people over to the Nikes and all of that? I just as well lock myself up than to go up. But in all seriousness, I want to tell you something about something that I connect with music and that I can connect with people. When you play the piano, you are connecting abstract sounds, right? And the reason why I like a sine wave, because it's been designed that way. And a lot of the generation of today, and including us, we listen to digital. Digital is so perfect that Jesus has to put earplugs on, okay? Okay, you catch my drift? He's got to put earplugs on. And, and that's why I told some of my students, and they said, well, if he's God and he's perfect, why does he have to put earplugs on? I said, haven't you caught on yet? It's because your mouth, that's why. You know, and the other thing is, is that we really don't know how to listen nowadays. Okay? For example, I don't want to make this into a workshop, but people like the, you know, blah, blah, boom, and all the big, you know, the big stuff, which when I was younger, not as crippled, you know. Now if I try to do it too much, I'll fall over to the right, and then you have, you'll have a pothole right here. But um, uh, people like this, you know, um, uh, uh, you know? So the tonnage 
tonnage or the, the tonnage of the strings add up to 18 tons of pressure on the piano. But the more tension, the more sensitivity. And as Christians, we have to learn that. The more tension we have in our lives, the more crisis that we're going through, whether it's health, emotion, or hatred, the more tension, the tonnage that pulls against our soul, it pulls us actually towards Jesus. Where we learn to not hear the word, but to listen to the word, which in turn causes me to react and to be what he wants me to be according to his word. Does that make sense? We're humans, so what? Jesus was human. And then you say he's God, you know? And, and I, I would say, well, do you know what that's like? I really don't. But I do get a hint every time I listen to him and not just hear what he's saying. And the greatest things I learned from the artists, like Horowitz or Regina Levine or Benedicti uh, Miraangeli, some of these people, was that because they didn't have all the contraptions that we have today, I mean, when the record player, you know, that uh, did the, you know, the 50s, and then, you, you know, you had that needle thing that you gotta have a diamond needle, you know, and then you had all of that kind of stuff. When that came out, they thought it was like an iPhone, you know? Right now, it looks like something that could stitch up a wound, you know? So, um, going back to that time, that's when I really learned what happens in listening, not only to God, but to music. And that is creating nuances. How many of you know what nuances are? Or have an idea what nuance is? Like if you're mad at each other, your nuances are a little bigger. They tend to crescendo a little bit more. And as you calm down, it either chops off. This is what a nuance is. If I play it for you, um, what piece? Clear to lose. Okay, now, this is what a nuance that I can pull on this piano. I can go very loud. I can sound, I hope I still can, like bells. Hear it? You know, so. It's very hard to play uh, pieces where you put the wrong notes in. Wrong notes happen by, you know, because you all are musicians, accidentally, don't they? And when I've worked with uh, choirs, I can see when they really get irked, you know? 
I'll go to a choir rehearsal, and then all of a sudden the person was telling me, I don't like that song. And I said, then why are you singing? <laughs> this song makes me feel like this. All right, excuse yourself. Now, it sounds harsh, but over the years, people need to hear the truth about all that we do. And music is a very personal thing, amen? amen. You know, I mean, if a guy's gonna play a guitar, right? When they're doing, you know, I'm sorry, but this doesn't work. Then you got all the band instruments going and no one seems to hear it, but you'll see in the side of the face, that one of the students going, I, I tell you it's that person. I tell you it's that person. He never tunes his guitar, you know? But let me close this all up as we're getting near towards the end now. Um, as I have played a little bit of comedy and I've talked to you about things, the one thing I've not shared to you a lot because I've been here been quite a bit, I've often wondered um, about where am I going to go from here? You ever thought about that? I thought that, you know, when I ended up in that wheelchair, you know, I call it an automatic rickshaw, you know? <laughs> okay. Without the bike rider, you know? But it's kind of broken now, with I told you, and, and so I think I need a bike rider for that. But anyway, um, when I look back and I look now where I want to go, I want to be better for Jesus. Amen? How do, what, what do I mean by better? You know? Better meaning I want to be everything he wants me to be and to fight like the Dickens so that my mind won't get to a place where I become complacent. Non -compl you know? So I want you to know that I do pray for you and it's always a privilege for me to come here but don't give up. Don't give up. Last funny story, and then I'm going to end with a piece, is that when I first, now you see me walk, I made a decision. I'm going to get up and walk. Now, I'm not one of those, you know, be healed and then boom, I fall flat on my face after I was healed. You know, I'm not one of those, okay? But I figured if I lie down, I'm going to die. My mind's going to slow down. So I heard a quiet voice in my heart that said, get up and go. Keep driving the truck. So, you know, you might feel you're on wheels, you're still moving. You might feel that, you know, that pain you didn't have before shows up. Believe me, I have these things that I put on my legs that are supposed to keep the blood flowing. Now, I have to tell you, I hope no one ever takes an Instagram on of me when I'm on this thing, because I look like a Macy's float. <laughs> it fills up here, and it does this. Then my legs begin to rise. How many of you drop things? You know, if you're lying down in bed and things like that, I got the dropsies. So I dropped um, my phone to naughty me after scolding my kid about this cell phone, and I fell off the bed. No, no, I was okay because I was in my Macy's float outfit. <laughs> Only thing, I wasn't going towards the ceiling, you know what I mean? I was going towards the floor. And it was the funniest thing because I got stuck between the furniture and this, and every time I try to get up, I would go like this, and I got real mad. And so if I kicked my leg, it would go boom. So now, if you want to come over for lessons for low tension exercise, I'll let you use my balloons, okay? But in all honesty. I ask you personally to pray for Shirley Hamrick because we need to pray for her. You know, as family members here, right? Your family, you know? There's people you always pray for. God still answers prayer. 
When it gets ugly, God still answers prayer. Now, you know, we say we pray for our young people, but we have to pray for all the rest of us. Because, to tell you the truth, when I see a 13-year-old full of tantrum at school, I really have a problem. And I'm in a position where I can't say, get over it, you know? So continue to pray, because your light does so shine. And I'm going to end with this piece. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, what a 
joyous beer, lost in a, in a delight. You've made our toes tap, our faces smile, and you've put a, uh, a song in our heart. And we're so grateful for that this evening. I will remember, I wrote it down, to continue to be better for Jesus. To be better for Jesus. What a great night it's been. I do want to make uh, an announcement, a reminder, that we actually have a very special event uh, this coming Saturday here at the Salvation Army at 7 p.m. That's the 19th of November. We have our Thanksgiving concert, and it will feature the Clearwater Citadel Band, the Clearwater Citadel Songsters, and our special guest, Bandmaster William Hines. So please come, 7 p.m. next Saturday evening for our Thanksgiving concert. And now it's down to me to close out this wonderful day of worship that we've had. Please join me, if you would. Gracious Lord, I thank you for the evening that we've had. We thank you for bringing Ross our way so that he might share his love of you and his love of music and his love of playing music to you and for you. And Lord, tonight we've sat back and we've just watched his worship. Thank you, Lord, for this time. We pray right now, Heavenly Father, for Shirley Hamlin. It's a name that Ross has mentioned a couple of times and we believe, Heavenly Father, we absolutely believe in the power of prayer to you, God, the great physician. So we just pray right now for Shirley. We pray, Lord God, that you will see fit to heal her body. We pray that. And now, Heavenly Father, as we finish this night, I pray your blessing upon each person here. Be with us and bless us until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night and God bless you.